Attack on Titan Season 4 Episode 11, titled Deceiver. With the previous episode of Attack on Titan, we finally learned some of the details of Zeke's plan to save Eldia. Essentially, his goal is to use the Founding Titan and the Titan of Royal Blood to activate the Rumbling partially and keep the world away from Paradise Island. After doing this, they would have enough time with the help of the Azuma Beetles to increase their military strength, thus allowing them to fend off attacks like this in the future and not constantly having to rely on the Rumbling. However, this plan requires sacrifices, being Historia and her future children, which has left the Paradise forces in a very dire situation, especially when they still don't know Zeke's intentions. So today I'm going to be breaking down and analysing this latest episode of Attack on Titan while clearing up some things you might have missed or weren't sure about. So if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other Attack on Titan content. Also, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers, so I'd really appreciate the support. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. This episode kicks off with Gabby and Falco being detained inside of a prison cell. And in an attempt to escape, Gabby pretends that there's actually something wrong with her, which gets the attention of the security guard nearby. So once the guard actually enters, she hits him over the head with a brick from the wall that she had hidden inside of her clothing, thus killing the guard and allowing her and Falco to escape. The next scene we have is Rana waking up for the first time following the battle with Marley. Porco and Pico are beside him and Rhino asks where Gabby and Falco are, since he wasn't aware that the two were taken to paradise and that they snuck onto the airship. We then have Gabby and Falco taking a rest after escaping the prison since they ran for the entire night to get as far away as possible. And both of them get into a small argument about Gabby wearing her Eldian armband. Now from the perspective of Gabby, it doesn't make a difference as to whether she's wearing it or not since the people of Paradise wouldn't know what it means. But Falco actually wants her to take it off, not for the fact that they might get caught, but because Falco knows they don't need those armbands to prove what type of person they are. Which is seen when he takes off Gabby's armband and she literally tackles him to the ground saying I'm a good Eldian. And if she's not wearing her armband, then she's basically no different from the devils of Paradise. And Gabby's just a perfect example of how effective the brainwashing of the Eldians on Marley is. She literally believes that an armband defines her, but then again she's been raised this way and it was indoctrinated into her life from the very start, so you can't really blame her. But on the other hand, Falco throughout this entire season is becoming more aware of the truth and is trying to help Gabby realise this. And Gabby is just such a hot-headed character as seen through her actions of sneaking onto the airships and killing the guard and now even though she's in enemy territory, her plan isn't even to find a means to return back to Marley. She literally just wants to find Zeke and ask him why he betrayed them. Even though she believes by doing this, she will get captured and killed. After Gabby and Falco have their little argument, we have Kaya who was listening in on the conversation, ask who they are and where did they come from. And automatically Gabby and Falco are on guard, but Gabby is literally ready to kill Kaya off the jump, like she was even thinking twice about it. Until Kaya asked the two of them if they wanted something to eat and if they were hungry. So now we have this crazy chance meeting between Gabby, Falco and Kaya, and what makes it so crazy is the fact that Kaya is the girl that Sasha saved all those years ago in the forest when the Titans attacked Kaya's village. And that moment to me is still one of the most, I guess, gruesome moments in Attack on Titan. The fact that the Titan was roughly 3 meters tall made it worse in my opinion. Just because of the fact it was eating Kaya's mother slowly and just waiting to eat Kaya later, which made the whole scene very hard to watch. And because the Titan was so small, I remember initially thinking is this even a titan or am I just watching cannibalism at this point? But yeah, that whole scene was just crazy and Sasha saving Kaya was absolutely epic, taking into account she had no ODM gear and only a bow and arrow. So now we have Kaya who looked up to Sasha like a sister and she doesn't even know that Gabby or I guess Mia is responsible for her big sister's death. But to make things even worse, the place that Kaya lives now is the Blau Stables since Sasha's family actually adopted her after her mother's death. And Gabby and Falco now under the names of Ben and Mia are eating with Sasha's family. However, both sides are unaware of this. And after receiving hospitality from Sasha's family, we can see Falco being grateful and doing his best to show this by eating the food they provided, whereas Gabby completely freaked out when Sasha's mother patted her on the head as a nice gesture. And this is obviously because she just thinks that all the people in Paradise are devils and that they haven't shown their true forms yet. Once again, all I can say is that the brainwashing and hate for the Eldians on Paradise runs deep inside of Gabby. And it's clear that it's hard for her to accept this not being the truth, as we see throughout the episode when Kai was giving her valid reasons as to why her mother's death was unnecessary, 
And when she was basically saying why should she and her mother have been held accountable for the sins of their ancestors, which unfortunately is the basis for the hate of Eldians on Paradise, as in the nation of Mali is taught that the Eldians need to be punished for their ancestors' sins, and that the residents on Paradise who are the descendants of the 145th Fritz King and the Eldians he brought along with him are devils because their ancestors fled from this retribution. We then have the arrival of the Azuma Beatles on Paradise in present time, and following the victory Paradise took in Mali, they've come to see the power of the rumbling, also known as the power to shake the earth, in action. And to actually observe this safely, they've created a flying boat which is believed to be the first of its kind, through using the Iceberg Stone, which was revealed to us last episode as being the main resource for the manufacturing of all the M gear. So the nation of Hizuru has already managed to make a flying boat using the Iceberg Stone as fuel, which further shows why they are willing to take so much risk through working with Paradise. The next scene we have after this is Hange being swarmed by people outside the gates due to the information leaked about Eren defeating Marley. After finding out that he had been locked up in prison, people want answers. As a viewer, we know that they locked Eren up because what he done was actually dangerous and it caused the survey corps to get involved which caused unnecessary casualties and because of this they can no longer trust him. Furthermore, his intentions aren't even clear right now so just to be on the safe side, they've confined him in prison. But to the public, they view Eren as a hero. So this leak of information, which we find to have been by Flock and his accomplices, is causing a stir on the island. And we see some familiar faces outside the gates, like Flegel Reeves and the reporters who announced the reclaim of War Maria and all the news that came along with that expedition. But all the people outside want to know what's going on because Eren's linked to the survival, so they don't understand why he's being locked up. And this information leak is causing trouble for the military and Hange being the current commander of the survey corps doesn't have many answers for the questions they're asking. Also, this next part I'm pretty much going to summarise because there's a lot, but we have Flock and his accomplices who leaked the information being questioned by Hange. And as I said a couple videos back, it's clear that some people like Flock, in regards to the task at hand of freeing Eldia, have a rather extremist mindset. Flock and the others are advocates of the whole rumbling plan 100% and they believe Eren should be freed and that he did nothing wrong when he attacked Marley. And he sees Eren as being the leader who will save every Eldian with the power of the rumbling. And he even goes as far as to call Paradise the new Eldian Empire, to which Hand replies is the nation of Eldia. Now this further shows what I was saying about Flock, because the old Eldian Empire used the power of the Titans to slaughter people and had a 1700 year reign of murder and eugenics. So even calling themselves the new Eldian Empire doesn't speak well. And after going back and forth with Flock, Hange makes the order to arrest him and the others for insubordination. And one of the members who ended up getting arrested was actually a girl named Louise who Mikasa saved back in season 1. And after that day she decided to join the survey corps to follow in Mikasa's footsteps. But she too thinks that Eren should be freed and that they need to fight back against the world which once again shows the difference in beliefs of many of the members of the Paradise Forces, despite them all wanting the same end goal of survival, some want the rumbling and the crushing of their enemies to play out in full effect, and some are looking for any other option besides the rumbling, if they can help it. With the next scene we have Commander Pixis questioning Yelena as to her potential meeting with Eren, which was actually prohibited, and he wants to find out whether Yelena, who is a devout follower of Zeke, has been influencing Eren's decisions or changed his mind in some way. Because after this instance of them potentially meeting, Eren started acting out of line, so Pixis wants to get to the bottom of things. We then have Gabby and Falco doing stable work while thinking of how to escape. And the scene of the horse just absolutely messing with Gabby was definitely funny to finally see animated. So seeing the horse mess around with Gabby was a small highlight of today's episode for me. Shortly after this, we have the moment between Kaya and Gabby, also known as Mia, which as I said earlier in the video, is basically Gabby trying to say that Kaya needs to repent for the sins of her ancestors, even though she wasn't involved in them. And we also see Gabby coming to this mental realization, as we can see from the way she acts and is talking, that it kinda doesn't make sense for Kaya to be punished for her ancestors' sins. Even though she doesn't say this out loud, after Kaya explains her mother's death and asks why did she have to die even though she did nothing wrong, Gabby is lost for words and has a sort of, I guess, helpless expression. After this exchange between the two, and Falco explaining the raid on Paradise from Marley four years ago and giving Kaya a sense of closure by saying her mother wasn't at fault. We have Kaya saying that she wants to be more like her sister who was Sasha and that's why she doesn't want to abandon Falco and Gabby and that if they follow her to the restaurant that the Blouse family was invited to by Niccolo the Marleyan, they may be able to find a way home. And although Kaya is such a nice person, 
It's just tragic knowing that she's not aware the people she so desperately wants to help are responsible for Sasha's death. And normally this would be the end of the episode, but today we had the scene after the ending credits where we see the warrior unit in Mali planning to attack Paradise Island immediately since they know the threat of Zeke and that they have no time to wait for the global attack on the island. And with that we come to the end of the episode. As usual today was a very enjoyable episode of Attack on Titan and I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It was interesting seeing Falco and Gabby interacting with the other side and just seeing where a lot of people stand in the show and with Marty getting ready to attack, I'm definitely going to be looking forward to these next few episodes. So with that being said, we have come to the end of the video and if you liked the video and want to see more Attack on Titan content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload. Also, make sure to comment down below your thoughts on the episode and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.